Welcome to our continuing study in the book of Jeremiah, which this week comes from chapters 36 through 39, with the focus on chapter 36. It begins in the fourth year of Jehoiakim, son of Josiah, king of Judah, with the Lord telling Jeremiah to take a scroll and write on it all the words that I have spoken to you against Israel, against Judah, and against all the nations from the day I spoke to you, from the days of Josiah, even to this day. Why? Well, verse 3 tells us, It may be that the house of Judah will hear and turn from their evil ways, that I may forgive their iniquity and their sin. And friends, considering all we have studied to this point in the book of Jeremiah, this is an amazing verse about the heart of the Lord, isn't it? His patience, his loving kindness, his continuing to offer forgiveness. Jeremiah called his assistant Baruch, the son of Neriah, and at his instruction, Baruch wrote on a scroll all the words of the Lord which he had spoken to Jeremiah. Ten months to a year later, the writing had been completed and the Lord's time for it to be read had come. Verse 9 says that in the ninth month of the fifth year of Jehoiakim, a fast was proclaimed for all the people of Jerusalem and the cities of Judah. For some reason, Jeremiah was confined at that time and could not go into the house of the Lord. So he commanded Baruch to go and read from the scroll in the hearing of the people in the Lord's house on the day of fasting. Again, the purpose was, verse 7, it may be that they will present their supplication before the Lord and everyone will turn from his evil way. For great is the anger and the fury that the Lord has pronounced against this people. Baruch did all Jeremiah commanded, reading from the scroll the words of Jeremiah in the house of the Lord, in the chamber of Gemariah, the son of Shaphan, the scribe in the upper court at the entry of the new gate of the Lord's house in the hearing of all the people. And note, the people now heard the words. Verse 11, Micaiah, the son of Gemariah, the son of Shaphan, and I need to pause and just say, we are going to hear many names. So as a quick reminder here, Shaphan was the scribe who read the book of the law to Josiah when it was found as the temple was being repaired. And when we read about his sons and grandson, we are reading about the sons and grandson of trust, integrity, and faithfulness. Micaiah heard all the words of the Lord, went down to the king's house into the scribe's chamber, and there all the princes, that means chief men, governors, counselors, officials, all the pre princes were sitting. Elishama, the scribe, Deliah, the son of Shemaiah, Elnathan, the son of Achbor, Gemariah, the son of Shaphan, Zedekiah, the son of Hananiah, and all the princes. Micaiah, declared to them all the words Baruch read in the hearing of the people, and all the princes sent Jehudi, the son of Nethaniah, the son of Shalemiah, the son of Cushi, to Baruch, saying, Bring the scroll and come. Baruch took the scroll, went to them, and they said, Sit down and read it in our hearing. So Baruch read it. And note, now all the people and all the princes of Judah have heard the words. The princes looked at each other in fear and said, We will surely tell the king of all these words. Then they asked Baruch, Tell us, how did you write these words? At Jeremiah's instruction? Baruch answered, He proclaimed all these words to me, and I wrote them. Verse 19, 
Then the princes said to Baruch, go and hide you and Jeremiah and let no one know where you are. The princes stored the scroll in the chamber of Elishama, the scribe, went to the king and told him all the words. Verse 21, so the king sent Jehudi for the scroll. He took it from Elishama, the scribe's chamber, and Jehudi read it in the hearing of the king, his servants, and in the hearing of all the princes who stood beside the king. And note, this is the third reading of the scroll, and it is being read for the king and his servants. And now everyone has had the opportunity to hear it. Verses 22 through 26, reading from the New King James Version. Now the king was sitting in the winter house in the ninth month with a fire burning in the hearth before him. And it happened when Jehudi had read three or four columns that the king cut it with the scribe's knife and cast it into the fire that was on the hearth until all the scroll was consumed in the fire that was on the hearth. Yet they were not afraid nor did they tear their garments, the king, nor any of his servants who heard all these words. Nevertheless, Elnathan, Deliah, and Gemariah implored the king not to burn the scroll, but he would not listen to them. And the king commanded Jeremiel, the son of Hamalek, Sariah, the son of Azrael, and Shalemiah, the son of Abdeel, to seize Baruch, the scribe, and Jeremiah, the prophet. But the Lord hid them. That means he covered them. He kept them close. He kept them secret. After the king burned the scroll, the word of the Lord came to Jeremiah, saying, verse 28, take another scroll and write on it all the former words that were in the first scroll, which Jehoiakim, the king of Judah, has burned. And you shall say to Jehoiakim, king of Judah, thus says the Lord, you have burned this scroll, saying, why have you written in it? The king of Babylon will certainly come and destroy this land and cause a man and beast to cease from here. Therefore, thus says the Lord concerning Jehoiakim, king of Judah, he shall have no one to sit on the throne of David and his dead body shall be cast out into the heat of the day and the frost of the night. I will punish him, his family, and his servants for their iniquity, and I will bring on them, on all the inhabitants of Jerusalem and the men of Judah, all the doom that I have pronounced against them, but they did not heed. Jeremiah took another scroll, gave it to Baruch, and he wrote on it at the instruction of Jeremiah, all the words of the book which Jehoiakim, king of Judah, had burned in the fire. And besides, there were added to them many similar words. Now that's quite a story, isn't it? One more God-given opportunity, one more rejection. Verse one of the story began, now it came to pass in the fourth year of Jehoiakim, we have heard that before, and we will hear it again. Jeremiah chapter 25, verse 1, In the fourth year of Jehoiakim, the word of the Lord came to Jeremiah, which he spoke to all the people of Judah and all the inhabitants of Jerusalem, saying, For twenty-three years I have spoken to you, rising early and speaking, but you have not listened. Behold, I will send the king of Babylon, this whole land shall be a desolation and an astonishment, and these nations shall serve the king of Babylon 70 years. For 23 years. Now, doing the math, Jehoiakim has heard Jeremiah proclaiming the word of the Lord since he was six years old. And when he was 11 or 12, the book of the law was discovered during the temple remodeling. It was read to his father, King Josiah. His father tore his clothes, made a covenant with the Lord to follow him and keep his commandments, and all the people took their stand for the covenant, 
And all of that was followed by the glorious spiritual reforms in Jerusalem and the cities of Judah. But now, in his fourth year, Jehoiakim has reigned in the years of, di of dilemma for Judah. They were caught in the middle of a power struggle between Pharaoh Necho, the king of Egypt, who had made Jehoiakim king after his father's death. Caught in the struggle between Pharaoh Necho and Nebuchadnezzar, the king of Babylon. There were also constant attacks against Judah by their neighbors, the Syrians, Arameans, Moabites, Ammon, and Edom. Add to that, the prophets of Judah were prophesying lies, and Jehoiakim himself was doing that which was evil in the sight of the Lord. Jeremiah 46 verse 2 tells us Nebuchadnezzar defeated Pharaoh Necho in the battle of Carchemish in the fourth year of Jehoiakim. He then entered Jerusalem, made Jehoiakim his vassal, and took some of the people of Judah into exile as he returned to Babylon. And that included Daniel and his friends. It was the first deportation of Babylonian captives. And now, just a year later, Jehoiakim takes the scroll of the words of the Lord and destroys it. Oh, how he wasted blessings and opportunities from the Lord. In just seven more years, Jehoiakim will suffer a death like that of Uriah, who he killed at the beginning of his reign with the sword and threw his body into the graves of the common people. Uriah, one who prophesied against the city and the land according to all the words of Jeremiah, words of the Lord in the temple. Unlike his father, who treasured the word of the Lord, Jehoiakim tried to destroy it. Our study guide says it clearly. No one can silence or destroy God's word. God's word is enduring truth. The first scroll was burned, but a second was written. And the day eventually came when cave four was discovered near the Dead Sea, a cave containing ancient scrolls. Among them were three copies of the book of Jeremiah. And today we have all the words of the Lord spoken through Jeremiah at our fingertips. Oh, what a blessing. Oh, what an opportunity is ours. I asked my wife, if you were Baruch, how would you have felt when the scroll you had penned was burned? How would you have felt? Friends, we don't have to wonder. Jeremiah 45, 1 tells us there were tears, grief, pain, sorrow. Baruch was absolutely exhausted from sighing. He was unable to find peace. He was unable to find rest. But the Lord spoke this word specifically for Baruch through Jeremiah. Thus says the Lord, Behold, what I have built, I will break down, and what I have planted, I will pluck up. That is, this whole land. And do you seek great things for yourself? Do not seek them. For behold, I will bring adversity on all flesh. But I will give your life to you as a prize in all places, wherever you go. Life, vitality, breathing, appetite, desire, heart, mind, pleasure as a prize a joy beyond expectation. Wherever you stand, wherever you walk, a promise of the Lord to a faithful servant, a promise that also came in the fourth year of Jehoiakim. You know, I find it interesting that after coming into the promised land and planting all kinds of trees for food, all the fruit in the fourth year was holy a praise to the Lord. That's Leviticus 19, 23, and 24. And in the fourth year of Solomon's reign, construction of the temple began 
and the foundation of the house of the Lord was laid. Number 637, 1 Kings 6, 1 and 2 Chronicles 3, 2. And in the fourth year of King Hezekiah's reign, and he was a, a king of Judah, Assyria invaded Israel. Three years later, they took it and carried away captive. 2 Kings 18, verse 9. Judah would have seen what took place in the northern kingdom and known the reason. But in the fourth year of Jehoiakim, the first invasion of Jerusalem followed for several similar reasons. In the fourth year. Well, another quick word about the many names in chapter 36. Both those who were protectors of and took a stand for Jeremiah and those who were set on taking his life, all have names whose meanings relate in a positive way to the Lord. It can also be easily noticed that several names appear more than once, but a more careful reading reveals that they are names of sons who have different fathers. In other words, there are those who were true servants of the Lord standing for the word of the Lord and for his servant, and those who thought they were doing the Lord a service by trying to take Jeremiah's life and destroying his message. Two different groups, sons of truth or sons of deception. In chapter 37, we are taken to the days of King Zedekiah and the king asking Jeremiah to pray to the Lord for us. The word of response from the Lord was that Pharaoh's army would not help Judah, but abandon them, returning to Egypt. The Chaldeans, however, would come back, fight against the city, take it, and burn it with fire. It was shortly after this messaging with Zedekiah that Jeremiah was imprisoned in the dungeons and cells in the prison in the house of Jonathan, the scribe, where he remained many days. Zedekiah had another question for, Zer for Jeremiah, so he took him out of prison and asked, Is there any word from the Lord? Jeremiah said, There is. You shall be delivered into the hand of the king of Babylon. In chapter 38, Zedekiah allowed some of his officials to take Jeremiah and imprison him in a cistern, lowering him with ropes into the mire. An Ethiopian eunuch, Ebed Melech, spoke to the king about the evil, and the king commanded him to take 30 men with him to rescue Jeremiah before he dies. Zedekiah met with Jeremiah again. Jeremiah delivered this message from the Lord. If you surely surrender to the king of Babylon, your soul shall live. This city shall not be burned, and you and your house shall live. If you do not surrender... This city shall be given to the Chaldeans, they shall burn it, and you shall not escape from their hand. One more opportunity. Chapter 39 is a record of the fall of Jerusalem. Zedekiah's attempt to escape, his capture, his sons being killed before his eyes, then his eyes were put out, and he was led away captive to Babylon. Jeremiah was released and committed to Gedaliah, who took him to his home where he dwelt among the people. Chapter closes with the Lord's reward of Eben Melech, who stood before the king and rescued Jeremiah from the cistern. Verse 18, thus says the Lord, I will surely deliver you and you shall not fall by the sword, but your life shall be as a prize to you. Sound familiar? because you have put your trust in me. Now, let's take a step back and consider the real work the Lord is weaving. We just heard the same words in his promise to Baruch, Jeremiah 45, verse 4, that he used in his mission for Jeremiah, Jeremiah 1.10, and in chapters 2, 18, 24, 29, 31, and 33, Words we will hear again in chapter 42. Build and plant. So what is the Lord building and planting? Jeremiah 31, 22. 
a new creation in the earth. Spiritual men and women, his workmanship, created for his glory. The object of his new covenant, putting his law in minds and writing it on hearts, a covenant relationship in which he himself ministers by his spirit, teaching his people to know him and to receive his forgiveness. Chapter 35 teaching the importance of listening to his voice, obeying and doing, which we saw last week in his example of the Rechabites. And as we know, there is more than one voice. There's the voice of the world, the voice of the adversary, and the voice of the Lord. So how do we discern between them? That's chapter 36, our study for this week. His teaching the importance of his word, not just to know him, not just to be able to recognize his voice, but to have a lamp for our feet and a light for our path, Psalm 119, 105. Help in times of trouble, encouragement, strength, and truth in the inner chambers of our lives. Oh, how we should treasure his word as prize for our lives, wherever we stand wherever we walk. So where is Jesus in all of this? And I ask because Luke 24 verses 25 through 27 records Jesus saying to the two he journeyed with on the road to Emmaus after his resurrection, O oh, foolish ones and slow of heart to believe in all the prophets have spoken. Ought not the Christ to have suffered these things and enter into his glory? And beginning at Moses and all the prophets, he expounded to them in all the scriptures the things concerning himself. So where is Jesus in all of this? Jeremiah 23, 1 through 8, he is the coming shepherd, the branch of righteousness. He comes to save. He is the Lord our righteousness. Jeremiah 31, verses 31 through 34, he brings the new covenant, offering it to all by grace through faith. He is the one of which Jeremiah 31, verse 22, speaks with unusual words. A woman shall encompass a man. Jesus says it this way in John 14, verse 20. At that day, you will know that I am in my Father and you in me and I in you. That's the indwelling promised to those who place their faith and trust in him. He is the bread of life, the light of the world, the door, the good shepherd, the resurrection and the life and the way, the truth and the life. He is the true vine and don't miss it. Revelation 19, 13, his name is called the word of God. Truth, life, the word is a person, Jesus. And he offers himself to all, he, all who believe. Well, what about the imprisonment in the dungeon and the cistern? What about the suffering? Jesus taught about that in the upper room too, didn't he? The world will hate you. Cast you out of the synagogue. Jeremiah wasn't able to go into the house of the Lord. But they have hated me first. He himself lives in us. We can stand. We and walk as he lives in us. Well, Lord willing, I hope to join you again next week as we continue studying the book of Jeremiah.